It's Wednesday, my dudes. How you doing? Welcome back to Hot News. Existential question of the day after the tongue one from yesterday. Is lasagna just spaghetti cake? Need answers, okay? Answer down below in the comments. Lasagna, spaghetti cake, same thing, need to know. So first article of the day, we're gonna be talking about Intel's next, next, next generation of CPUs because there's been some details coming out about the potential Alder Lake desktop CPUs that could feature up to 16 cores in a way that we haven't seen before from Intel or other desktop manufacturers really in a way that they're gonna have multiple dies, but not like AMD has it with Zen 2 where it's like eight cores on this CCX and eight cores on that one, no, no, no. But yes, it's gonna be eight cores on this one and eight cores on that one, but it's gonna be eight big cores on this one and eight little power efficient cores on this one. So they're gonna be taking the mobile architecture that has been around for ages in cell phones and Intel's bringing out with their Tremont cores. So they're actually implementing this elsewhere. It looks like this should potentially be coming to desktop. So the rumor is right now that Alder Lake S will have a big little structure with eight powerful cores, eight smaller cores, and then one graphics core on it as well, which would give you 125 watt TDP, 16 cores, and will be on the LGA 1700 socket. So we're moving up to 1200 with the next generation of Comet Lake, which we're expecting sometime soon. And I'll talk about that in a bit. And then we'll move up to 1700. Currently we're on like 1150-ish. So they're gonna be adding 550 pins from now until then on the socket itself. But this would be Intel's first mainstream desktop 16 core part. And the only way they're getting there by having having TDP and everything work the way that it should would be by making high power and low power cores. This could be good for overall efficiency of desktop, making sure that the smaller cores are handling things such as web browsing or just general day-to-day -day tasks. And then the eight powerful cores are for video game play-in and all of the rendering that you would do on a processor like that. But it wouldn't necessarily be an improvement. There's no statement yet on whether this would be on 14 nanometers, potentially 10 nanometers is the likely scenario and whether or not there would be more power in IPC coming out of these things because if there isn't and it's still just based on the Skylake architecture but at 10 nanometers then it's just going to be like get a 9900k and you're going to have the same performance without the efficiency loss. There is a lot of potential for it especially in the mobile sector where you actually have to be more concerned with power efficiency because you're running on battery all the time and you need to make sure that the non-essential and non-crucial tasks are being done as efficiently as possible. On desktop where it's constantly plugged in then it just becomes an environmental issue and like do you want to always be using the most powerful stuff? Well, yes, because I keep my chip overclocked at five gigahertz flat all the time. My 9900K doesn't go below five gigahertz ever because I'm that guy. But do we need this in a desktop? I don't know. Is this going to bring any new innovation to the desktop that we haven't seen before? We'll find out. Maybe it would make background tasks a little bit easier to run. Who knows? We'll find out in the future. But Alder Lake S supposed to be potentially coming out in 2021. Eight big cores, eight small cores, plus a GPU there. What do you guys think of this? Let me know down below in the comments. But then there's another rumor speculation going out there about the next generation Comet Lake. So that's the 10th generation that we're supposed to be getting from Intel on the desktop and that it's potentially delayed up until June. So initially the idea was that these were gonna be announced at CES, but Intel and its motherboard partners weren't ready because of how much power these chips are consuming. And now with supply chain issues on 14 nanometers, as well as obviously Voldemort wreaking havoc on people's health, this could potentially mean that the chips are delayed up until Computex even, which would be a long time from when Coffee Lake has been coming out, has came out, came out as a chip. But that's not the only 10th generation rumor we have out there. There have been European retailers that have come out with the pricing on the chips and it's not as good as you would hope. So if we directly convert from the euros to the dollar and try to make sense of what's going on with the pricing that we see for these retailers, the top end 10900K, which would have 10 cores and 20 threads is gonna cost $562. If you compare that to AMD's Ryzen 9 3900X, which has 12 cores and 24 threads that is $500 stock so the Intel chip is $60 more expensive but it's been on sale lately for about $420 and you can go to Micro Center they've been selling it for under $400 so that would be a 25% price increase to $500 and a little bit more the 10900K doesn't really look too good especially since AMD was able to match Intel's IPC the only thing that Intel could potentially do here is crank out a little bit more clock speed which isn't going to 
necessarily happen because they're at their thermal limits anyways. Going on down the stack though, the 10700K, which is gonna be the eight core 16 thread trip that has $436 price tag, which makes it again, the 3800X is $400. The 3700X is $330. This is over $100 more expensive than AMD's competition. The i5 10600K, which is gonna be six cores, 12 threads, is looking to come in at $296, which again, the Ryzen 5 3600 is $200 normally and $175 right now over on Amazon. So the pricing is really just what you would expect out of Intel. There were rumors circulating that Intel might potentially be looking to drop the pricing on their chip on the upcoming generation, especially after they did that for their new Cascade Lake chips. The 10980XE is $1,000, whereas the previous generation, which had the same amount of cores, was $2,000. But it doesn't look like, at least according to these leaked European retailer pricing, that that's going to happen to Intel on their desktop. Obviously, this is just a leak, which could be potentially fake, and it could be there to get us to talk about it, and Intel is gonna come in and look like the good guy by dropping their pricing to be more competitive. But as it stands now, this doesn't look too positive, at least according to me. Give us back our market share. <laughs> There's one more Intel rumor that we need to talk about, which is apparently they're looking to TSMC to help them produce the nodes for the Project Z GPUs that they're probably going to be coming out with on six and three nanometers in the future. However, this rumor has happened so many times that Intel was looking to TSMC or Global Foundries to make some of their chips, whereas Intel has always said, we're making our own CPUs and we're making our own GPUs. But the rumors keep swirling that potentially they might go to TSMC. I would take this with a huge grain of salt, not sure they're actually looking outside of themselves. There's also been the rumor of Samsung. We'll see if this ever actually happens. But what has happened is there is another vulnerability for Intel, another one. Hey Reese, do you want another? you get another. So obviously we had the AMD news story earlier in the week and last week it came out that there was an unpatchable vulnerability in Intel security management engine on their chips. Well now it's come out that you know the meltdown inspector stuff that's already been patched? Well that exists even worse and it's goes against the patch, so you're not even be able to use it. So this is happening in the SGX part of the Intel CPUs. It's called load value injection, and it's currently not patched. However, the anticipated performance hit, once you patch this, is 50% in SGX use case scenarios, which is not, a lot of people aren't using SGX, so it's not that big of a deal. You, you don't use any SGX stuff. But for anybody who does use SGX, it's basically gonna become unusable to you because, woo, 50% performance hit, so it's bad. There's more stuff. The Meltdown Spectre stuff was bad, was patched out, and now there's a new LVI that's out here that is just hitting your CPUs. Another vulnerability into Intel CPUs. This sucks. But I'm vulnerable to playing video games, especially really good ones like Horizon Zero Dawn, which finally from Guerrilla Games got announced that it is definitely coming out to PC. So you're gonna be able to play as Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn, gonna hunt the machines. It's a great, fantastic game. It's a, a tremendous game. I loved it so much. No confirmed release date as of yet, but Death Stranding, which is also built on the same engine, is coming out on in June. So hopefully Horizon Zero Dawn won't be too much longer after that. I'm just excited for my PC bros to finally get to play that monster. Yeah, well, it's good for PC bros to be able to finally play it, but then also it's gonna look better than ever because it was an amazing looking game on the PlayStation. So if they can convert that into a PC game that has even better graphical settings and even higher frame rate, I'm looking forward to it. Speaking of high frame rate, high frames, high feet, fast speed. Tesla is what I'm talking about because Elon Musk tweeted out yesterday that they are looking to bring new gigafactories to the US looking for a central location in the United States for their Cybertruck gigafactory and potentially also having an East Coast production gigafactory for the Model Y. So having more Teslas coming out, we reported yesterday that Tesla finally produced its millionth car and now they're gonna just be ramping that up faster and faster. And speaking of faster, remaster rhymes with faster and that's what's happening in the Command and Conquer. They're getting a remaster, which now has a release date, it's June 5th. But Reese can say yay about Command and Conquer remaster. He is also going to say yay to this next article, which is E3 has been canceled. Actually, it hasn't officially been canceled, but every publisher and developer is saying, just get your refunds now because it's not happening. And according to people who spoke to the agency behind E3, which is the Entertainment Software Association, they said that they were supposed to announce it yesterday, but quote, it slipped. They were supposed 
supposed to cancel it yesterday. Everybody who was involved in the event was notified that it was canceled, but the public announcement was never made. So it's canceled, but it's not officially canceled. But from what I've heard from anybody who's attended E3 lately, E3 kind of sucks at this point. There's there's not a whole lot that's going on. Most game companies are choosing to do their own events, especially the big players like Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. They're choosing to hold their own keynotes outside of it, so it makes sense for them to not even attend E3. So it's a weird situation, but E3 now dead, obviously, due to Voldemort and the things that are happening. But YouTube's supposed to be talking today about whether or not I have to continue to save Voldemort and get demonetized. So okay. we'll find out about that. And we'll also find out about Apple's next generation of SOC because there's indication that TSMC will be starting on its five nanometer mass production in a April. And it seems like the first big undisclosed customer that they have for the five nanometer chips is Apple for the next generation A14 SOC that would be going in the next generation of iPhones, which Apple has continued to kill the SOC game. Their CPU and GPU and NPUs that they put in their uh, mobile chips are ridiculously fast fast for being designed in-house. Good job. You can say what you want about the software and about the culture. Apple makes some actually good hardware, the hardware that they actually make. I'm not talking about like the Mac Pro where it's a shell. I'm talking about like the SOCs. Good. Vertically integrated. Speaking of vertically integrated, I like to get vertical with my skateboard in a video game known as Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Yes! And the original Underground. Underground 2 was better. Facts. Just like Need for Speed, Underground 2 was better. Anyways, there's some indication coming out from multiple different sources that there are people who are licensing their songs to a new Tony Hawk game, and then there was rumors circulating that Pro Skater 1 and 2 are being remade. So there's either a new Tony Hawk game coming out, which hopefully will be more like Underground 2 and less like Ride, which was terrible and we can have new new fantasizing about being a famous skateboarder once again or being big player and speaking about my childhood people's childhoods this has nothing to do with childhood. Too many dang people have downloaded the Stadia app. That's what I have to say. So the Stadia app on Android has hit over 500,000 downloads. Why? 500,000 people didn't buy the gosh dang Stadia. Nobody needs this. Stop, stop making people feel like Stadia is a success. Stop trying to make Stadia happen. It better happen. I want cloud gaming. I, I'm in this weird torn place of stop, but keep going, please, for me. I'll pay you. What's your safe word? Munchlax is my safe word and also, a good tie-in to the last article of the day, which is something that hurt me when I read it, Kotaku's headline. Your old Neopets may still be alive and very hungry. They're starving. Did you ever play Neopets? Okay, so I played Neopets back in the day. Anyways, it's just a breakdown of like, they're trying to get people to come back to Neopets. It was hitting 600,000 page views in 1999. By 2005, it was 25 million active players with 2.2 billion page views every month. And then it got bought by this company and that company got bought by this company. And now it's, anyways, they're working on getting people back to Neopets and you could potentially get your old account back. I'm gonna confess something to you guys right now about Neopets. I used to be somebody who fished for free people's passwords and got like their accounts and traded their stuff. I used to be that guy. Oh, dang. I have repented of my ways since then. I don't fish anybody anymore, but Neopets is where I got my first like foray into social engineering. I'm sorry for anybody whose account got banned because I screwed with you. Dang. It was very easy to create like a fake landing page where you could get people to log into it. It was, it's like a classic early phishing scheme, but it was also a lot easier to just make it because of some HTML and some basic CSS back in the day. I feel bad for that. But I also remember none of it. I have none of the names of people. Like I didn't catalog it at all. I was just a little jerk. Speaking of little jerk, I'm gonna jerk on out of this chair as in a movement. Anyways, bad episode ending. Is lasagna just spaghetti cake? Is my hair ever going to grow out again? It grew back in last night. Bye. All right, I need a, I need a, make sure my brain. It's on the full throttle.